series and I just gave you a couple samples of some of music for our feature tonight Mr. Andrew Thor Angelico um, you can go to his YouTube channel to listen to him you can also like him on Facebook the link is in the invitation for tonight's um, Speak Up and Inspire series please make sure that you go and check him out by hitting the like button on his Facebook page and also checking him out on YouTube we are going to be talking to Andrew Thor Angelico tonight um, as part of our month talking to inspirational men or men in the community that are doing great things in the community. He is joining us live right now. Um, so we are going to have the chance to talk to our first musician that's going to appear on the Speak Up and Inspire series. And I'm very, very excited to talk to him. Just want to give you a lineup of what is going on this month with the Speak Up and Inspire series. Last week, we talked to Cedric Sanders, um, founder of 303 Creatives. He talked to us about the importance of branding your businesses, services, or products. This week, we're talking to our musician, Andrew Thor Angelico, and how he uses his music to inspire others. Next week, we are going to be talking to Jonathan Coleman, the founder of Blacktopia, to talk about um, marketing your brand and the importance of supporting your own when it comes to supporting Black businesses, and not just Black businesses, but businesses that are within your networking and using the sources and products in your 
own network. We're also going to be talking to King Hef on July 22nd. He is the founder of Black Hefs and Pink Hefs. You will get all of this information for our upcoming speakers or interviews in the links as we are talking today on the interview with Mr. Thor. And then July 29th, we are going to wrap up the month of inspirational men in our community by talking to Nuff Said, the ultimate host and comedian. So... I hope that you are all ready to be enlightened and to be inspired. Our Andrew. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Tiffany? Thanks I'm for having doing me. Great. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You look like you are outside. I hope you're not hot. <laughs> it is a little hot, but it's all right. There's a lot of people running in the house right now. And don't want any interference you know good good i understand um we're in charlotte and here it is about 90 degrees but it feels like 100 degrees because of the humidity how's the air there and where are you i'm in las vegas and probably about 100 right now oh my god usually about 100 (laughs) (laughs) yes i had a friend who um lived in vegas for a couple of years and um, that's all he talked about, about, is about how hot it was in Vegas and how it felt like it was 110 degrees throughout the summer. Um, so I feel for you. And now you just made me appreciate Charlotte weather here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to meet you. Um, I've heard great things about you from um, Jonathan of Blacktopia. Um, he is has promoted you as an artist and as an, an inspiration to um, other artists. And so I was very happy when you accepted the invite to um, to interview with us for the Speak Up and Inspire series. So thank you for taking out the time to talk to us tonight. I appreciate you. I appreciated the offer. I mean, it gives me another chance to brand myself as we both know that's so important yeah. in this industry. Yes. And yes. I just need a chance to get my message out. Right, right. Okay, so we're just going to jump right in. Um, how long have you been doing music and what inspired you to start um, your career as a musician? Uh, I guess I really started doing music when I was six years old playing the flute for band at school you know but my dad got me this little keyboard and I had that for a long time and I picked up the guitar and I had always written poetry okay so that's what really inspired me to become a rapper is just the poetic aspects of it all and being able to portray a message through my words and how I feel right and I feel like there's got to be people out there that feel the same way Okay, so when it comes to your music, you said you started um, when you were in school, um, uh, learning the flutes. Are you, do you play those instruments now, or you, what kind of instruments do you play now? I play a little guitar now. I mean, I've moved away from all that. I really wanted to focus on my lyricism and what kind of message I'm trying to send. Okay, all right, nice. So when did you, I guess... Tell me, did your poetry turn into music or did you go from poetry to just writing music? What was the process? Well, my friend discovered my poetry once and he said that I should try it. I can listen to my old stuff now because just how far I've come with this, but... I guess it kind of was a gradual thing. I was resistant to trying to become a rapper. I never thought I could do anything with it. And I didn't think anybody would care what I had to say. But that's, everybody's got a message. Everybody's got plenty of people that think just like them in this world. That's true. And anybody can make it. That's very true. That's very true. So tell us a little bit about you. Um, you said that your music was inspirational. So tell us, you know, briefly, what is your story that inspires you to to be a musician? Well, I don't want to go too much into detail, but I had a lot of trauma growing up. Mm-hmm. And from that, there was a lot of struggle in my life. It changed me completely as a person. And 
I guess I just try to find a way to be strong. And that's what I want to send to the world is that no matter what you go through, you can push through and make it. Right, right. Well, um, I'm sure that you've taken the time to um, look at the Speak Up and Inspire series to see what it is that we do. We try to um, interview people who are inspirational and doing great things in the community um, and reading the different blog posts and about you was the reason why I reached out to you. Um, with the Speak Up and Inspire series, as you know, um, it started off with us interviewing um, domestic violence and sexual assault survivors. But then I expanded from there because there are so many different causes and there's so many different things that are going on in the community that people need to stop. And we hear about the celebrities and what the celebrities are doing and people that are you know, millionaires and they're on a TV, but we don't hear people in our neighborhood that are doing great things. We don't hear about our friends. We don't hear about our neighbors. And so that's why I took it even further, not just talking about domestic violence survivors or sexual assault survivors, but also just talking to people like you and like me who have a story, who have a message um, and just need to get out there because our stories can help other people. Um, so I appreciate, you know, you you sharing your story and you putting out in the universe that, you know, you do have a voice, you do have something to say, and that you do want to help others, um, you know, over overcome whatever adversities that they're going through. Are there any causes that are dear to your heart right now in your community? Right here in this community, I've just been really focusing on trying to spread my message and grow my fan base out here because I've only recently moved out here it's only been a few months okay. but I do want to work closely with to write love on her arms one day and they're a mental health organization they're all based on self-mutilation and okay. trying to overcome that and move okay. past that okay and that's that's a very important topic um I am going to school to be a mental health counselor. And so some of the topics that I've been learning in my education is about um, self-harm, mental health, and so forth and so on. So that's a very, 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 very important cause. Um, so kudos to you for doing that. Music. What is your, what is the song that you feel um, really shows who you are as a person? What's the name of it? And tell us about it. Hmm. You know, I haven't actually officially released that one yet. It's only on SoundCloud. I have to re-record it, but okay. it's up there. It's called Even. And it comes from the bottom of my heart. This is how my life's been. You know, I go through life and it's really hard for me to fit in anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to find people that relate to me. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to talk about certain things and I'm really closed as a person because of it, but that's my own issues that I'm still working through. And, you know, I just want to inspire people to know that you can get through anything. That's so true. Really. That's so true. Um, you said that you um, have all of us have our demons, you know, all of us have a past. Um, all of us have something that we've, we've overcome. When it comes to your music, why did you, um, what is your genre? First of all, I don't want to assume. So what is your genre of mu music and why did you choose this genre to represent you and, and to inspire people? Well, my genre is hip hop, old school hip hop with a message like, and what inspired me for that is because in hip hop, everybody has a voice. That's the whole point behind the culture. Right. And I just wanted to be a part of that. Who are some of your inspirations I mean, when it comes to music? I always loved Eminem and Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole. Like, but, you know, I started listening to really old school stuff like Grandmaster Flash and The Message. It really changed my outlook on a lot of things. And I wanted to 
just do something that contributes to what they put in. Right. To the work that they, and I think too many people don't recognize that anymore. Right, right. Um, there are a lot of um, inspirational artists out there, um, especially J. Cole, Eminem. I love Eminem. He is one of my favorite rappers. I don't care. I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves, um, but I love him. Uh, Kendrick, Kendrick, ugh, Kendrick Lamar, I'm getting tongue tied. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's um, known for being an inspirational artist um, and, and doing something different in the game. Um, who would do you have a comparison to your music to others is there anyone that you that inspires your music as, uh, specifically or someone that you would like to um collaborate with maybe well that's a hard question where <laughs> i get inspired from, is from all different genres of music like i grew up listening to the beatles and Roses and my uncle was a blues guitarist and I love his music. I listen to Pink Floyd. I listen to so much different music that people have never heard of. So it's really hard to say where my inspiration comes from. And that's probably why my style is so unique because I don't take it from one place. I don't want to be like anybody else. Right. I want to be me. Right. And you are definitely you. I have listened to a couple of your songs. Um, I am on YouTube and I'm looking at the, it looks like My Way. I was just listening to that. I played that a little bit when we started off. Um, I also listened to Cry No More. And there was one other song I was listening to at the beginning um, that I wanted to just see just from the titles, what it was that you were possibly talking about. Um, and one of them was, what do you see? Tell us about that one. All right. Well, people always view me how they want. And I realize that I recognize that, but. I feel for a lot of people, they're not going to recognize that people aren't going to see you the way you want them to see you. They're going to see you in their own eyes through their own perspective. So it's all about people misinterpreting who I am as a person and not understanding the true me because they don't desire to. Right. Right. And I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. Right. I definitely can relate to that. Um, I know with, um, you know, just being a woman and um, I believe that I'm a pretty strong minded woman, but I'm not perfect. And sometimes I have felt in the past that, you know, I've been judged based on maybe some things that I've done in my past, so forth and so on. Um, I was just talking to someone the other day and they were saying, you know, they were thinking about having two profiles because they're an advocate in the community and they're doing great things in the community, but they're still an individual and they felt that they needed to separate it. And for me, um, I've posted several times that, you know what, I am just me. And, you know, I'm an advocate, I'm a domestic violence survivor, I'm a sexual assault survivor, you know, I've been married, I'm a, I was a single mom, I've been homeless before, you know, that's what, that's the part of what makes me, and that's what helps me do what I do out in the community. Um, so I definitely understand what you're saying. People are always going to see you the way they want to see you. And all you can do is just be your true self, your true authentic self. So yes, I, I definitely feel that. I definitely feel that. So, tell me about you. Are you married? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm <laughs> single, but, but, to be honest. It's all right, though. I, I don't really have much motivation for that right now. I'm working on my goals and my vision. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love it. I love it. You know, sometimes, you know, when it comes to having um, personal relationships, we have to work with us first and getting to know us first and strengthening who we are. So I definitely get it. So I hate for people to, or I would hate for people to go into relationships or go into marriages and they are not completely where they need to be, or they have things that they want to accomplish first and they go into a marriage and, um, aren't necessarily ready. And that's not something I wish on anybody. <laughs> so yes. Um, talk to me about your platforms. Where can we find your music at? Or what is your, your biggest platform for your music? 
my biggest platform for my music. That's that's a hard one. I, I'm on every platform now. I just released my EP, so you could find me anywhere: Spotify, Pandora, Apple, Amazon, uh, any major platform that you could want. I'm on there pretty much at this point. And okay. That's the Angel of Death EP by Thor Angelic Thor so, Angelico. Got um, it. We'll link to that in the comments later on or something. But, you know, I find that my fan base is way bigger on Facebook, though, because I'm so personal with people and right. I want to make a connection. Right, right. I definitely understand that. Um, I think connection is, is very important. When you um, talk to people or what kind of feedback do you get from people? Because don't take offense to this, but you're, you're in hip hop and you're rapping and I'm looking at you. I don't think you're African American or, <laughs> or black. So when you think of rap and you think of hip hop, um, you usually think black, unfortunately. So what kind of feedback do you get when it comes to you going that route versus going, I don't know, rock or pop? <laughs> what kind of reaction do you get from people and how do you handle that? I mean, a lot of the time when I meet people and I tell them I'm a rapper, they're like, what? You, you rap? But then they hear my music, and if they actually listen to the words that I'm saying, they can actually understand that I'm being real about it, and right. it is hip-hop. Right, right, right. Who's your favorite hip-hop um, artist right now? That That's a really hard question. I... <laughs> I gotta say NF, I think. Okay. It's really hard between NF and Watsky, though. Okay. Okay. These are, these are up and coming names. They're not famous, famous yet, but a lot of people know who they are. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna be one of those people that doesn't know who they are because I've, I've never heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay because I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check them out when we finish. <laughs> when we finish talking, um, and plus, I'm really horrible with names. I could have heard something about from them and just don't even know who they were as far as name wise. <laughs> I'm horrible with names. You can never put me in a game of trivia. So, tell us more about you. What is something? What do we need to know about you? You're, you're up and coming, you have your music there, you have it on all the platforms. What do we need to know about you as a person? If you were to, to, to meet me in person, I said, tell me, tell me about you. What do I need to know about you? What would that be? You know, sometimes I think the only thing I care about is music anymore. And that's mainly because it's a door that opens for a lot of possibility. Like, let's say I made a million dollars. Right. For my music. Mm -hmm. I can invest that and make five million. I can invest that five million and make twenty million and keep growing from there. And then I'll be able to dump money into all these good causes that really need it. Mm -hmm. Research, cancer treatments. Like there's all types of things I've wanted to do in my life. And at one point I realized that I'm never gonna have time enough for all of it by myself. Right. And so I had to come up with a solution. I got it. This I got it. <laughs> My puppy is in the background, so please excuse me. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. So you're in Vegas. Do you perform live in various places? Yes, I do. Okay. What is your I favorite place to perform? Uh, uh, I've been going to the Box a lot. It's on North Nellis, and it's just, it's a little venue, but it's come to be the home bar. And there's a few places lined up in the near future where I'm going to be performing, like the Las Vegas Event Center and the Rio Hotel in the next couple months. Oh, wow. I'm trying to branch out. Yeah. I'm trying to branch out and find more venues. Uh-huh. To perform at, more chances to spread my message. But working with what I got. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, th and that's the best that we can do. Um, I'm not really familiar with um, the music industry. So it's really hard for me to say, okay, um, do this, do that, or try to steer you somewhere, so forth and so on, because I don't know the music industry. But um, what I have learned in just being a business owner, um, 
being an entrepreneur is that we have to constantly put ourselves out there, market ourselves, brand ourselves, and so forth and so on. So no matter what business you get into, and it sounds like you are doing very well in Vegas and just traveling and being on all the platforms and so forth and so on. So what is what is your message? You've mentioned that a couple of times. What is your message? What are you trying to get across in your music? Or what do you want to inspire people? What message is it that you're trying to get out there? All right. So most of the time when I write my music, I'm going through a personal crisis. It's something that deeply relates to how I'm feeling. And I take that negative emotion and I turn it into something positive through my music trying to spread my message so people don't feel alone in this world right and I know how much music saved my life growing up when I was locked up as a kid in Hillside when I got taken away from my family I've been through a lot and I know there's people that have been through way more than me Mm -hmm. and I just want to promote mental health awareness I want people to be aware of how people feel as well Like, if you're not going through these things, still think about what I have to say, because there's people out there that will relate to this. Right, right. Yes, mental health is so important. Um, I've struggled with depression all my life. Um, I've dealt with trauma in my childhood. I've dealt with trauma in my adulthood. And mental health is is really important. Um, You know, a, a lot of our being of who we are and how successful we are and our relationships all of it stems from our mental health and, you know, being healthy and taking advantage of the resources that are in our community to help us because mental health goes swept under the, the rug so much when mental health is tied to almost everything in our life, um, our relationships, um, you know, how we communicate, um, how successful we are, how we relate to other people, you know, what it is that we do in the community, the, the energy that we put out on energy and how we transfer our energy to people. And all of that, everything that we do is rooted Cut in mental health. Bit. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? No, hold on. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think that's better. <laughs> how, how is this now? That's better. Okay. All right. Um, I was just um, emphasizing on what you said about mental health and how mental health um, is the root of everything that we do. And that it's very important that we take advantage of the resources in our communities um, to be able to to empower ourselves in order for us to um, have a a healthy state of mind. And sometimes it's a struggle. I've dealt with depression all my life. I still deal with it. Um, And so mental health is a struggle. It's an everyday process. It's something that you need to invest in. And so for you, music is your outlet. And for many people, that's their outlet. Um, and you said that usually when you but that's when you write your best music. How's that? Yeah, definitely. I, I just have a deeper train of thought than I normally would because sometimes things are only on a surface level, but if it only goes skin deep, What's the point of putting it out there, really? Right. Have you ever thought about, there's a lot of um, mental health uh, activities and um, forums. Have you ever thought about um, possibly becoming a mental health advocate in your community um, and using your music to be able to be an advocate in the community? Have you ever thought about doing that? Or is that something that you started to do? not even sure what channels I would have to take for that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but yeah, I'd be more than willing to speak out good good I would love to talk to you about it we have a lot of um, 
networks and myself, including Jonathan, um, with people that are that have mental health symposiums um, that do advocacy for mental health. So if that's something that you are interested in, I would definitely like to plug you in and, and I can connect you with Jonathan again and we can um, see what we can do. You're in Vegas, of course, that's across the world, but every city, especially major cities like Vegas, definitely have um, organizations that are always looking for advocates. I think that um, what you're doing um, shows your strength um, it shows what kind of person that you are. Um, you wanting to use your your music to inspire others. I think that's an amazing, amazing thing that you're doing. Um, and I have, you know, I've read a couple of posts on your page. And so I understand the struggle. I definitely understand the struggle. But when you use those those moments that you do to write your music and put it out in the universe. I'm sure that you have received feedback that someone's able to relate to you. How do you handle that when someone comes to you and say, man, I felt that too, or yeah, I understand what you're talking about. How, how, do you, how does that make you feel and how do you handle that? Sometimes it surprises me, honestly, that somebody felt that they could relate to exactly what I was talking about so well. And it would be, it might be something I wrote six years ago or six months ago or something I just put out that day that people want to say that about like uh, my one song can't let go. Mm -hmm. It's about what would you regret the most? Imagine losing it all, but you can't let go. Mm -hmm. Now that you got no home, tell me where you're going to go. And a lot of people religiously play that because they're going through a really hard time in their life right now and it helps them wow helps them know that i made it out of the street out of the gutter and so can they right right and that was can't let go can you um recite a couple of uh verses to the song so we can hear more about what it's about and you don't have to sing uh, either rap it or maybe just quote it <laughs> i would like to hear more all right. Rest in peace to who I used to be. I'm who I choose to be. They all loosely confuse what's underneath my skin, my sheath. Can you tell I finally faced defeat and rose the victor? Now defeat is after me. Tries to knock me off my feet, but I won't let it. It's copacetic. So listen up to my rhetoric. Detect like I'm ahead of it. Inside I am just dead a bit. There is no time left for me to celebrate. While looking at our nation state, it's complicated, but I will gladly debate it. Enough saying that it's in our nature. I'm tired of hearing all of the nomenclature. Let's think about what's at stake here. Everything. I think it's time that we let freedom ring. Start enjoying all of the simple things in life. You never know it could all end tonight. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Love it. Love it. Love it. And I can see how you like Eminem. I can, I can hear it in there. It's there. <laughs> Um, so you're an Eminem fan. How did you feel when Eminem did that video about Trump? How did you feel about that? I'm not, I'm not sure I saw that. You didn't? <laughs> yeah. Well, it was, it was a big... I like his old music a lot better. Okay. Than his new. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was pretty controversial. <laughs> it was pretty controversial a couple years ago when first, um, when Trump first took the office, took office. Um, but it's old music. Where are some of your, your favorite old, um, old school Eminem? What's your favorite song? <laughs> Talking to Myself mm -hmm. is a really amazing song to me because mm -hmm. I felt like that a lot in life or cleaning out my closet. Mm -hmm. the thing for the moment I felt like he was speaking to me and that's what I wanted to portray with my music is speaking to somebody because you really have to know your audience right. and you have to know yourself in this music game and it's there's a lot of people that won't ever realize that and won't ever make it right. and it's sad right yeah it, right. it is you're right. So even though you write your music and it sounds like it's therapy for you, do you agree? Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay. So your music is therapy for you, but you also realize that there are people out here that are, are that have suffered through the same things you have suffered through, are probably going through some of those same things right now. And so that's the inspiration behind your music. Is that what I'm understanding? 
Definitely. I mean, I, I'm just trying to help the world. I want to make something that's worth leaving behind in this world. I want my name to be remembered as somebody that did great things and inspired others to do great things. Right, right, right. How old are you? I'm not alone. I'm 27 now. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm getting up there. <laughs> um, hold on now. I'm 42, so <laughs> you're not even close to... <laughs> you're not even close I'm to getting up to there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 42 and man, what I would do to be 27 again. <laughs> do you have any kids? No, nope, not yet. No, no kids. Someday I will, but I'm not ready for that. Understood. Understood. Well, you know, at least you can admit it. Some people just jump into stuff and go full head on in and they're not ready for any of it. So you know, big, big shout out to you for recognizing, you know, that you're not, you're not ready for marriage. You're not ready for kids right now. Totally and completely understand that. At 27, I was not a mom yet. Um, so, and it's, it's hard work. <laughs> and then God blessed me with twins. So I got double whammies. <laughs> yes. They were basically my, my 30, 31st birthday present. They were born a couple of days be after I turned 31. So, yeah, having kids is a is a big deal, very very big deal. So when you have yeah, kids, definitely. when you have kids, what are some lessons that you're going to teach them? What are some life lessons Just, that you've learned that you're going to teach them? You know, treat others how you want to be treated. That's a big one to me, and I can't respect people who don't treat people well because what does that say about them as a person and you know i think that's one thing about the rap game that needs to change too is all the violence that's involved and the, just talking down on people all the time like right it doesn't need to be this way in the world it really doesn't but i mean if people want to keep perpetuating all that negative energy the i don't know how it's going to go but I know there's going to be something big happening eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of time because people are going to keep perpetuating this and it's just human nature. Right. In my time that I'm here, I just really want to do something that's worth it. Right. Right. Um, do you do your music full time or do you work as well? I do my music full time right now. I need to find a job though because mm -hmm. I, the help that I've had no longer there so gotcha got it. what it is right I understand. But, I understand sometimes we have to to work a nine to five to pursue our passions that's just the way life is sometimes mm -hmm. yeah definitely so who would you say is your biggest support system when it comes to your music because i see you have a support system definitely people are watching and saying that you're the, that you're their boy i got hearts going on i got the 100 percent sign going on so you have a support system who would you say is your biggest support my biggest support hmm. i mean it's got to be my dad honestly mm -hmm. he's been there since day one he's listened to all my music and he religiously plays it every day i don't ever have to ask him and I can't thank him enough for doing that for me, you know. Right. And he never even liked hip hop. Okay. So it took a while to get him to even pay attention to what I'm trying to do with this. But gotcha. Started making a little noise, and he started to support me with it. Right. Right. Well, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, I lost my dad in 2014, and um, he helped me um appreciate music. Um, as a child, I used to sit with him on his lap when I was a little, little girl. Jazz was Growing up, he taught me about music. My dad would listen to everything. He listened to jazz. He listened to country. He listened to hip hop. He listened to rap. If he was alive today, he could tell you all the latest rappers and hip hop because he loved me, appreciated music. He helped me to appreciate music too. Um, I'm a big jazz fan, but I'm definitely a hip hop fan. I'm definitely a rap fan. Um, I have my preferences when it comes to music, but um, I appreciate all music. So 
on your time when you're not doing your own music? Is hip hop your preference or do you have a preference when it comes to the music that you like to listen to on your own time, not when you're creating? That's hard to say. I mean, I listen to a lot of alternative rock. Okay. Like events of old Breaking Benjamin. Mm-hmm. Uh, these. But hip hop is really where I'm drawing my. <laughs> my dogs hear the dog in the background. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Out. It's not a real doggy. <laughs> well, not here anyway. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Continue. Sorry for the interruption. Well, I listen to mainly hip hop, but mm-hmm. I listen to even hip hop that I don't like. Okay. Just to understand why they would try to portray this message or why they made it the way they did mm-hmm. or why people like it even. Because I want my music to be enjoyable too, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's a hard line right there between catchy and meaningful. Right. Because you got to do both. Right. You have to. I like that. I like that. So for you, your main objective when it comes to your music is inspiration. It sounds like it's not just about making money. It's not just about putting your face out there. It's not just about, you know, being in the rap game or the hip hop game. It's really about connecting with the people. And that's what I'm, I'm getting from you. Those are the vibes I'm getting from you. And um, that's the reason why we have you and we're talking to you um, because those, those are the kind of people that we want to meet. And those are the kind of people that I want to promote and, um, and back and support and so forth and so on. So um you're exuding that very well. Um, I'm so proud of you. Um, I am looking forward to your journey and where you want to go. So I'm going to ask the question, and this is like a, a, a great interview question that I hate to answer, so I'm, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> where do you see yourself right. in five years? Where do you see yourself in five years? You know, I'd like to be touring the country. Ooh. Okay. Like, I'd like to have plenty of people showing up to all my shows. Plenty of people dying for new music. Plenty of people that listen to my message and spread it. Uh, that's really what I'd like in five years. That's where I see myself. Right. I'm just getting started. Right. Yes. I love it. Um, I have someone that is watching right now. Um, his name is um, Devon, and he. He could interview you with me, but the, just the timing didn't work for us. So his name is um, DJ Shock, um, but I know several DJs. I know several um, radio personalities. So I want to ask you if it's okay for me to connect you um, with some DJs that can maybe play your music and put your music out there um, and just connect you with some people in my network. I'm not, I don't know music industry, but I do know people and I do know a great, great deal of people um, that I would love to connect you with, um, starting with, uh, starting with him. And I see that he's watching with him um, when we finish interviewing and I hope that you'll be open to me connecting you with several people that I think um, would 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 support you and um, interview as you as well and possibly play your music um, I believe in what you're doing I believe in inspiring people um, I believe in supporting someone that wants to support others um, and you have a message you have a, a huge mess message of you know, mental health awareness, taking care of you and putting positive energy out there. Um, so I applaud you again um, for doing that very much. I, I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate what you're doing. Definitely. Thank you for doing these podcasts. You know, you're trying to spread a positive message too. And I give respect where it's deserved. So Thank you. Thank you. When it comes to your music, um, what would you say a song that's constantly always in your head. Your, your song, constantly, 
just resonates with you all the time? Or or, or are there several? And if so, it's got to be Can't Buy Me Love by the Beatles. Okay. Uh, that's the first song I ever loved, and I still love it to this day, and I play it constantly. Okay. <laughs> Can't Buy Me Love by the Beatles. Okay, so what about your songs? What is one of your songs that um, you seem to, to always find yourself singing or, or rapping or sharing? The songs. Give us, uh, let's say, three. Three of your favorite songs that you've written yourself. Uh, all right, cry no more. Okay. Can't let go. And what do you see? Okay. Got to be my top three to share with people because I feel like they're the most relatable and best put together that I have so far. Okay. You know, I'm I'm constantly trying to improve with my music. I'm constantly trying to get better. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'll ever just keep the same style forever. So right. it's really hard to say where it's going to head from here sometimes okay. but right I try to be consistent right as best i can love it love it so um what i would like for you to do um before the night is over if you can place the links songs um in the comments so that we can listen to them um and i want to share them that's what i'm going to be doing I'm promoting you um i'm going to continue to follow you and sharing what you're doing um, on the Speak Up and Inspire series and on my personal page. So I want to make sure I get the links to those three songs that you just mentioned, because if those are your favorites, those are probably the ones that um, magnify what you're trying to do and who you are and the inspiration that you're trying to put out there. So I definitely want to make sure that people are, are hearing them and um, and feeling what it is that you're, you're putting out there. Definitely. definitely. I can definitely take care of that. Yes. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Sorry, I got distracted for a second. I wasn't sure. Oh no, you're, moving in. you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. Well, I have dogs barking in the background, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else would um, you have your music? Do you have any other hobbies that are dear to you, or any other hobbies that that help you that are kind of therapy for you as well? Otherwise, in your music, I meditate a lot. Okay. <laughs> I try to do some deep breathing exercises and clear my head. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can consider that a hobby or mm -hmm. not, but it's something I really enjoy because it helps me clear my thoughts and get my head where I want it to be and get my priorities straight. Mm -hmm. What's important to me. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to school to get my master's to be a mental health counselor. And so one of the big subjects that we talk about is mindfulness. And that has a lot to do with um, breathing techniques and meditating and so forth and so on. It's very good for the soul. It's very good for your mental health. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely an, a, a great thing to do on a regular basis. I wish I would make time to do more of it myself. <laughs> I'm sure I could use it, definitely. So is there anything else that you'd like to share with us? What's going on in your world that, that um, we need to follow or we need to know about? Tell us about some big things that are going for you right now. Well, I've got... A couple shows lined up. My next one that I'm performing on is at on the third at the box on North Nellis. And then there's another one the next day on the fourth at the Las Vegas Events Arena. Ooh. And I'd like for people to come support me at those. Okay. That's a big thing that I'm getting ready for. Okay. Do you have some um event links or flyers or something like that that I can grab from you to share? Or how can yeah, people learn about the event? Okay. All right. So we're going to take care of that, too. I want to make sure that we're supporting. Now, again, I'm in Vegas. I mean, not in Vegas. I'm not in Vegas. But I'm going to put it out there in the universe because um, we do have listeners. Our um, our base, our, our growth or whatever, watchers, <laughs> is growing. Um, it's 
doing really, really well. We have some pretty um, loyal followers. So I want to definitely put that out in the universe as well. Um, any events that you have coming up, please tag me. Um, please tag the Super Bowl three so that um, people will be able to see them because we have a lot of followers. We're doing really good when it comes to that. Um, our network is amazing. Um, and it's because of who we're interviewing, people like you who are inspiring and doing things. So people like to hear positive things. You know, I, I hate watching the news. The news is so depressing. It's good. People like to hear positive things. And so uh, we've had a nice uh, audience tonight listening to you. Um, I see you have a fan base yourself. And so I'm looking forward to continuing to listen to your music and following you on your journey. Definitely. So. Thank you so much for this, Tiffany. <laughs> no problem. No problem. You are in um, Blacktopia. How do you feel about um, the platform? I, I've been in there for maybe a year now, and that's where I met you. So are they showing you some love in there? And how are you, how are you doing when it comes to networking? In there? Honestly, I haven't been very involved because I feel like it's not my place. I'm a strong supporter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, if you guys need any help with anything, please let me know. Right. Of course. <laughs> it, it's not really my place, you know? Okay. To... Yeah, I understand. I okay. definitely understand. But one thing I'm, I've learned about um, Jonathan and one thing I've learned about Blacktopia is that one, they're not going to they're not going to stand for any disrespect um, of people because of their color or their race or what they're doing. Um, it's a positive network. So I would encourage you to maybe come out, come out the box a little bit and post some of your work um, because it's all inclusive. Even though it says Blacktopia, it's not just about being Black or it, that's not what it's about. It's about networking. It's about spreading positivity. Um, and that's where I found you. So it must be doing something. <laughs> um, Jonathan believes in you. Um, so definitely, 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 I encourage you. If if you're not commenting, then at least every now and then, at least post your music in there and, and get, get your music out there because it's going to inspire someone because it inspired me. Um, so I believe in um, networking ag across all cultures um, because, you know, I'm multicultural myself. I have a diverse background. Um, and so many of us have a diverse, a diverse background and I claim all of mine. So um, I definitely encourage, you know, you're already in a diverse um, genre um, and you're, you're making moves. You're making moves. Um, it does support you um, because you're in there. He's posting about you. He's, he's putting links out there. He's promoting your music. Um, we're listening to you and that's how I found you. So um, I want to applaud you again for, for being in there, being bold and continuing to work with not just your race or your culture, but my race and my inspiration. It's, it's colorblind. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I just want to really just help this world. Right. And I have fans overseas. I have fans all over the world mm -hmm. that really get helped by what I have to say sometimes. And it keeps me going. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sitting here and pretend I'm perfect. Right. But I do have strong morals for my life and I live my life a different way than anybody I know. Right. That's got to say something. Right. Um it does. It does have to say something. And I can say that, um, you know, when when you live your life um, on your terms, it's, it's nothing wrong with that. And just like you said earlier, your music talks, talks about, you know, how people are going to see you for the way they want to see you. But then people are also going to respect you um, for being, you know, who you are. And not being afraid to, to be who you are. Um, and so I think that uh, brave, I think it's 
amazing. It takes a lot to, to tell your story and it takes a lot to put your, your story in your, in your music, but it, it takes even, even more strength to, to reveal who you are on the inside to people because not everybody's going to be accepting, but it's not about people being accepting. It's about you being who you are and being your authentic self. So um, keep doing that in your music. I am so excited to to follow you. Um, I've been posting, you know, some of your 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 work on my page, which I will continue to do. Um, you have just gained a, a friend and a supporter, and um, I just want you to know that. I'm totally, totally, totally excited for you. Um, how many followers do you have? Do you know? No idea. Actually, at this point. <laughs> yes, I see you're on YouTube. I see you're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. You're on Spotify. You are everywhere. So when people are looking for you, tell us again, how can they find you? If they're not listening to the, the podcast or they are listening to the podcast, how do they find you? Tell us how to find you. Uh, if you Google Thor Cry No More and whatever streaming service that you want, it's mm -hmm. on there. Okay. That's the best way to find me right now okay so thor cry no more that's it thor cry no more yep on google any streaming platform just got it can you can you give us a little bit of that again cry no more that one yeah that one uh-huh <laughs> i don't want to put you on the spot <laughs> uh, i don't i don't feel like singing so i'm trying to get to the verse in my head <laughs> no you don't have to you don't have to <laughs> we're gonna just share okay. the links and we'll let people listen to it how about that not trying to put you on the spot <laughs> all right well if i'm sad all my neighbors are gonna be judging me <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, again, I want to thank you um, for taking the time to um, to interview with us. Uh, we have used this time very wisely. So before we go, one more time, how can we find you? And tell us what message is it that you want to put out there in the universe when it comes to your music? All right. Well, if you follow me on Facebook, you can go to facebook.com slash Thor Angelico, and I'll link that in the comments later. And my message with music is just to inspire and make people feel like they aren't as alone as they might feel sometimes. Awesome. Awesome. Um, are you on Instagram too? Well, you said you're on everything. So what's your Instagram? What's your Instagram name? It's the same uh, URL. It's Instagram.com slash Thor Angelico and Twitter as well. Okay. How do you spell Angelico? Even though you're going to put it in the comments, but people are watching. So I want them to be able to get to it now. So how do you spell it? A-N-G-E-L-I-C-O. Okay. Uh, now this is the question that I've been wanting to ask. Where are you getting this name from? <laughs> is Angelico your real last name or is it a name that yes. you, yes. That is my real name. Okay. <laughs> and uh -huh. it's supposed to be in the first. Okay, say that one more time. I didn't hear you. Thor was supposed to be my name at birth if okay. my dad would have had his way. Okay. My dad's the one who raised me, so really I've identified with that way more than Andrew my whole life because okay. I've gone through my life being called Thor. But to me, it's a really symbolic thing with my music because oh. I just have this really powerful message to spread. Right. And somebody's got to stand up for stuff like that. Right. Okay, so I didn't know if it was maybe that you just love Thor of Avengers like I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, yes, Thor Angelico, got it. Facebook, Instagram, that's the handle. And Thor, cry no more. That's how we can find you. If we can't find you, no other way. That's the way to find you. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So thank you again for being on the Speak Up and Inspire series. I will be following you. I will be sharing you and supporting you. Um, if you need anything, if you have any events coming up, any announcements, please let me know and I'll do the shout outs and everything for you. Tag me. Um, we are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
um, Speak Up and Inspire series. And of course, we are friends on Facebook, so you can always tag me on my personal page. Um, I will be connecting you with uh, Delvon um, when we get off of here, because he's been watching the whole time. I can see him in my corner my thing right now so i am going to connect you with him um and maybe he can play some of your music when he's in the club because he's at the clubs you know throughout the week that would be great to get some exposure here in north carolina and south carolina um and i'm also going to connect you with some other people and um i am very 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 grateful thank you very much <laughs> for taking time out to be on the Speak Up and Inspire series. Um, I will be putting our interview on YouTube and I will be sharing it. I'll send you the link and um, hopefully you will be sharing us as well. So um, thank you. Have a great night and um, we appreciate you. I appreciate you. Okay, good night. <laughs>